Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Bros. My name is Ryan, and today we are continuing with our how to build a Ford 302 small block Windsor, or in our case, a 347 Stroker, with part 10 by putting on our throttle body and a couple other little accessories here and there in our rear main seal. Those are really, really important and basically getting everything ready to either be putting inside of an engine bay or in our case, on a dyno. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and thank our amazing sponsor, Summit Racing. They have been absolutely incredible. The best sponsor I've ever worked with. They've sent me an absolute ton of parts to make this Ford happen. This series and this engine would not be happening without their support. So go ahead and show Summit Racing some love and buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. With all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so now we can focus on our carburetor fasteners. So I always recommend using something like this, this ARP product where it's a carb stud kit where you put the studs into the intake manifold and then you have nuts on top. Instead of trying to fumble around with bolts or something like that, this is gonna make your life a whole heck of a lot easier. Sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description. So then we can put our carb studs in and you don't really need like an implement to put these in. You can just screw these in by hand till they stop just like that and just do that for all four corners. Perfect. And now time for the crowning jewel of our 347. I have been very excited to open this thing up. Since we got it sent over by Summit Racing, it is Summit's version of a all-in-one EFI system for a carbureted you know, intake manifold. It'll fit most carbureted four-barrel uh, intakes. It'll convert anything right over to EFI, supports up to 500 horsepower, and it has a self-tuning ECU all built right in. It's incredible to me. And enough jabber, and I want to open it. All right, we got some instructions right off the bat. Definitely give these a read over because uh, because well, there are definitely things in here, little tips and tricks you're gonna want to know before you start try to start your car or truck. Comes with the complete wiring harness. Check that out. Look at that. They use like all OEM connectors. Check that out. That's like an OEM Ford connector. Very similar. It has a little safety on there. A little you know, seals to keep water out and dirt and crud. Little blade connectors. The big daddy connector for the brain. <laughs> what a trip, that's awesome. Cool, and it's all labeled, look. TPS right there. Injector three right there. Very cool. That is gonna be a snap. And then we have more stuff, which is always good. What's this? Oh, check that out. That is our little screen. So this little bad boy right here is super cool because this is how you actually control the unit itself. Nice big color screen there. And you can also use this as gauges. So technically you don't even need gauges if you're in a pinch, you can use this as your gauges. It'll tell you oil pressure and water temp and all that good stuff. So, very cool. Set that aside for right now. There is some wires for that. That goes into the gauges, I believe, or the screen. It does, and look, for all you techies out there, look, it uses USB-C instead of micro USB. That is really cool. Micro USB tends to break. So USB-C is a smart move. Oh, O2 sensor, you're gonna need that. If you are using this kit, you are going to have to weld in an O2 sensor somewhere in your exhaust. All that information is in the instructions. As a result, they do include the thread insert and the bung itself, so where you can weld that in. Look, it even comes a little heat shield. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Uh, USB-C cable, so you can plug this into, you can actually plug the uh, unit into your laptop, so it goes USB-C to USB-A, that's pretty cool. What's this? Oh, it's a little uh, mount for it. So you can, you know, clamp it onto something. Actually, I think this suction cup goes on like your dash and then you can clamp the screen onto this. So it's a little easier for you to see. So we got some hose clamps for like an intake boot. Uh, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go, um, we have another air cleaner for that. And then we have some gaskets here. It comes with two different ones. One, I believe, is for a spread bore and one's for a square. We have square, so we're gonna be using that. And then it also has a seal right here for a traditional air cleaner, which we are gonna be using. Oh, we'll get there, we'll get there. And then you have its brain right here. This has to be mounted somewhere inside. I definitely recommend putting this inside of the cab somewhere um, just to keep weather and water and dirt away from it. That is my recommendation. Some people do put them inside of their engine bays. I disagree with that personally. 
Oh yeah. I've never had one of these before, so I'm a little excited. Sports up to, up to 500 horsepower. That's way more than this thing's gonna make. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It looks just like a four barrel carburetor, but instead it has four fuel injectors and a computer and a brain and it's smart. Look at that. You can see where the injectors plug in right there. Looking kind of see. Yeah, right there. Doesn't that look like a regular fuel injector? That's because it is. It has a throttle positioning sensor. It's got a regular mechanical linkage, so you can just hook it right up to your classic hot rod. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And see, it just opens just like a regular carburetor, but instead of Venturi's and that whole mess, it uses fuel injection. How cool is that? And then you have your fuel inlet here, and I'm sure you can swap that side to side per application, but that looks like a uh, uh, dash six or a dash eight. So that's pretty cool. And then there are our vacuum provisions for our brake booster and our uh, PCB. And check it out, on the back it has an IAC. Doesn't it look just like a regular Toyota IAC or something? That is so cool. And look, you can replace it in case it ever fouls up. So it's very easy to work on, it seems. It's got more vacuum provisions here as well, if you uh, need that for whatever reason or another. And it has different bolt holes for different applications. This thing is so cool. <laughs> Let's put it on. So now we can remove our tape. You should always be putting tape over any uh, entrance, you know, temporary entrance into the intake as a precaution so nothing falls down in there and causes you a bunch of problems. That'd be new fun. Carefully remove that. So we can put on our gasket here and it's it has different holes for different applications. So just line up the one that best serves you. This one looks absolutely perfect. Oh yeah. Now time for a crown jewel. Just make sure that your linkages are on the driver's side and we can just line that up oh, and set that down. That looks amazing. So on each and every carb stud, we're just going to put a washer and we're going to start our nut. There we go. We're going to do that for all four. And then we're going to grab our half inch wrench and we're just going to snug that down in an X pattern. And for tightness, you're going into aluminum and it doesn't need to be stupid tight. Just wrist tight's fine. Don't overthink it. You just want to go in stages too. You don't want to go, you know, super firm on one and then none on the others. You want to keep that X pattern going. And just wrist tight is perfectly fine. And there we go, our throttle body's installed. I don't know about you guys, but this thing is looking absolutely awesome. And we've brought this 302 into the future with our amazing Summit EFI throttle body with four injectors supporting 500 horsepower. This build is really coming along and we are at the very tail end. So now we put our coil on and our, our spark wire kit's pretty cool because it came with two different lengths in case you didn't want one that was super long. Uh, I typically use the longer one because I enjoy mounting the coil on the firewall. Obviously we can't do that on the dyno. There is no firewall. So we're just gonna kind of have to set it on top um, for that application. But if you were going to put this in a car, I recommend mounting the coil on the firewall. I think it looks snazzy and then it's up and out of the way and you don't have to deal with it. Our coil flow today is made by Summit Racing, link down below in the description. Oh, that feels pretty nice. That is a nice coil, check that out. Cool. Feels nice and heavy, good in the hands. It's gonna pl supply plenty of power for our ignition system. Let's go ahead and hook it up. So I have my wire here. I already have some dielectric grease on both sides. And for our coil, you know, on Fords, a lot of the time they mount them, you know, coils like this, they mount them horizontally, which I don't agree with because it's filled with oil. So if you mount it like this, the top portion here of the coils is being, you know, exposed to not oil, which is gonna wear the coil out faster. So typically you want to mount it like this. That's why I like mounting them on the firewall because then you can mount it back here you know, a little higher up though. And uh, you know, it's vertical, which is the way I would want it. But since we're going to the dyno, we're just going to kind of lay it down right there and we're not gonna be running it very long. So we can install our coil wire in the middle. Makes a nice sound. Then we can install the coil side, oops. There we go, on the coil. We're just gonna set that down there for now and we will deal with that, hooking that up on the dyno. All right, so I have our engine hoist connected to our engine sling and it is bolted in with fairly long bolts going into the head. They're probably about that deep in it. So there's lots of thread there on all four corners. You wanna make sure you get all four corners installed. This is not the time 
to cheap out or try getting away with using inferior engine lifting techniques. I especially don't really like using the, you know, carburetor liftoff style, uh, especially with this aluminum heads. You could just pull the threads right out. This is really the way to go. This sling was sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description. We're going to begin pumping until it's a little bit off the ground. There we go. You can kind of tell when the weight is being uh, put onto the straps. And we can remove our pin from our engine stand. And then we can just push that out of the way. Very cool. And sort of negotiate this out of our way. There we go. We're going to grab a 5 8 socket and remove our apparatus here. this really cool rolling arrangement made by All Star Performance sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description. This is an excellent solution if you have to take it to the dyno, you don't want your brand new engine sitting in a tire or something like that. Um, alternatively, if you're putting it directly in a car, you don't really need one of these, but if you want to store it or again bring it to the dyno, this is going to be your friend. Alright, with our engine carp assembled and put onto the bottom of our engine, we can go ahead and start, we can go ahead and start letting it down slowly. We're going to put on our PCV tube to our vacuum source. We have a excellent source right here at the back of our throttle body. I have about a foot, eh, maybe about 11 inches of 3 8 vacuum hose. We can just slide that over. There we go. And it picks, affix it to our valve. So this setup is pretty cool. If you're putting this in a car, this is the port you would use for a vacuum supply for your brake booster. Alternatively, if you have like a regular carburetor and it doesn't have that provision, again, you can just use this port right here like we did on our big block Chevy. So now we can focus on putting our rear main seal in. It's kind of the last piece of the puzzle here. And for that, I have a Felpro. There's our part number and the link is down below in the description sent over by Summit Racing. So let's go ahead and get this out of the baggie. And on this, so this is the way it goes on. You can tell because there's a big U channel on the back. So that's going to go like this into the engine. And what we like to do is apply a bit of grease on the inside of the seal. So that way when the engine starts up, it doesn't start up dry and tears this up. And then you have a ginormous oil leak. So we can grab some of our, it's not too important what kind of grease, just I like this Lucas stuff. We're just going to apply a thin film on the inside brim. This was the right choice. This is really nice grease. And the next thing we're going to do is grab our best friend RTV and I'm going to put a little bit on the end of my finger. And what we're going to do is on the outside, we're just going to put a very thin film like that thin all the way around. So we've got a thin layer of silicone rubber all the way around. We've got a little bit of grease on the inside. Now when you put this on, you want to make sure that you put it on kind of like this on the bottom first, lifting up and then pushing on. And keep an eye on the inner lip of the seal because you don't want that folding over. I also want to mention that I've cleaned the inside surface where the silicone rubber is going to go very well with some carburetor spray and a terry towel. So we can put the bottom on, lift up just a bit and then push on the top. So you just make sure that lip doesn't fold, you know, curl around in on itself. You can kind of see it, you know, laying on top of that surface, which is what you want. We can just push that back as far as we can with our fingers. It's going to be a little firm. What we can do is use the old rear main seal as like a die using the flat part to flat part on top of it and then grab our little rubber mallet and just go around and evenly tap her in. 
Oh, that's already working great. And that sound means that it's fully seated in when you hear that really nice deep thud every time you use the hammer you know this is where it wants to be in its home. Another way you can tell whether the rear main seal is fully installed is this surface, the rear main seal, the fifth main cap, and the engine block will all be at the exact same flushness like this is. That is perfect. So now we can focus on basically our final piece, which is our dipstick tube. Typically you put these on when you're putting your exhaust headers on because that bolt hole goes on your exhaust headers. We're not gonna have any right now because it's not going in a car, it's going to the dyno, but this needs to be on. Now, when you install your dipstick tube, something we're not going to do because this isn't a permanent install, is you're going to take some silicone rubber and apply it just to right here all the way around. Um, when you bolt it in, uh, that will prevent any kind of leak and that will be your permanent install. But again, we're going to the dyno, so we don't need to do that. And this was sent over by Summit Racing. There's our part number and the link is down below in the description. So we can take our dip tube and put it in its home. Now again, we're going to the dyno, and there, this is gonna have to be removed to put our exhaust setters on anyway, but I'm just showing you. You put it in, grab your plastic hammer, and just tap it in, but tap it all the way down so the this little brim right here is matched with the block, again with that silicone rubber. So pretty cool. And then again, if you had your headers in, you can put the dipstick in, and it looks absolutely fantastic. All right, so we're at the end of our Ford build. This has been an absolutely fantastic journey. I can't thank our sponsor, Summit Racing, enough for sponsoring this build. It would not be happening without them. And we have built one totally awesome 347 Stroker. This thing is ready to be installed in a vehicle of your choice, or in our case, off the dyno. So let's go. Well, let's hold on just a moment. The dyno video is coming later. This was just to get your engine ready for the dyno or to be put into a vehicle. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the dyno video coming up very soon. I promise it is very exciting and worth a watch. Thank you Summit Racing for sponsoring this video series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.